Hi guys, ST1 here. Finally SnowRunner is out and I've been playing this game for last week as I got this game early as a review copy. I'm still exploring more and more new things in this game and there are a lot of new stuff that I have not discovered yet. So consider this video as a sort of first impression. Firstly let's talk about graphics. The graphics of this game are far far better than previous games. Just look at the rendering distance detail level uh, there are reflections now on muddy areas which makes it look very realistic and mud physics itself is improved a lot also there's this rain weather effect this time see these raindrops hitting on the roof of the vehicle although it make the terrain look wet but devs already confirmed that rain does not affect gameplay uh, it can change in future but right now it does not affect anything. Now let's discuss terrain physics. There are different terrains in SnowRunner like road, mud, snow, ice, swamps. I don't want to discuss them too much but yes all these terrains have improved physics model now as compared to previous games. The snow here is really beautiful. We can behave differently on snow and mud as you can see here look at the water here it looks clean and real and behave like real water as well look at these water currents by the way this vehicle is added few days ago and it's mentioned as a dlc vehicle it was free and i believe it or not but it comes with all these upgrades by default look how currents are pushing this vehicle in water and uh, and i think it's floating Yes, it's floating. Maybe due to its tire or due to cabin air or something, but it's floating in water. We'll discuss more about this vehicle later. Let's move to vehicle damage physics. Now, vehicles have five damage parameters. These are tires, fuel tank, engine, gearbox, and suspension. Here you can see a fully damaged vehicle and notice the health level of each of these parameters. Most vehicles you find on maps are going to be in this condition and so, so you have to either repair them or recover them in garage. Here's another truck for comparison. This one has no damage done to it so you can see the difference between a damaged truck and a new truck. During my gameplay I find few more things regarding damage physics like a damaged engine can consume more fuel than a normal engine. By the way fuel consumption in this game is lot higher than previous games because even if your engine is running idle your vehicle will still consume fuel. A damaged gearbox will keep shifting to neutral randomly mostly when you push your engine to high rpms. Now let's talk about vehicles. SnowRunner has a proper truck store which you can assess through garage options. There are 40 vehicles in base game and not all vehicles are available from the start as you can see here. Uh, some are locked behind rank while others can be unlocked by exploring a particular region. Uh, basically there are 5 categories of trucks. These are highway, heavy duty, heavy, off-road and scout. Although you can buy Russian vehicles on American map and vice versa, uh, but you can use any vehicle on any map. More on that later. This game also has trailer stores. You can find these trailer stores on maps where you can buy trailers and semi-trailers for your truck and scout vehicles. Variety of trailer is different for different vehicles. Let's move to vehicle interiors. Each vehicle has its own unique cabin design with details like working gorges. In night time, these gorges close just like in real life. Here's a look at Chevy pickup cabin. Notice that gorges in this vehicle are in digital. I can't believe the amount of details they put into vehicles this time. Here's a look at cabin of International Fleet Star. And yes, the mirrors are working this time. Look at all the details in cabin itself. Trucks like this have two mirrors on side but scout vehicle have a mirror in middle as well which makes sense if you think about it. Let's talk about time cycle. 
this game has a dynamic day and night cycle but you can also switch time manually if you want and this time it does not cost you fuel or anything you can switch between morning afternoon evening and night so what do you do in this game firstly let's start with main objectives contest in these events you need to finish a particular task in limited time based on which you get gold silver or bronze award the better the time the better the reward tasks these can be anything from simple delivery mission to fun activity some are hard some are easy you'll get money based on difficulty contracts contracts are a list of tasks that you need to complete on every completed task you get money and experience points here's an example of such task where we are delivering metal and wood to construct the bridge once the bridge is constructed you can go to other side of the map there are various such roadblocks on map it can be anything like fallen rocks fallen tower etc here's another example where you need to repair the wooden bridge in order to progress your way through map now let's discuss maps and regions currently in this space game you have three regions michigan alaska and time meet there are 11 maps in total and you can travel to any map in any region at any time only condition is that you have unlocked that map first by the way you will get one map unlocked uh, in each region by default you can unlock a map by traveling to it through these tunnels these tunnels connect all map in one particular region so that you can complete those contracts which require you to try travel through one region to another once you have a vehicle in a map then you can assess that map anytime as long as that vehicle is in that map but if you manage to unlock the region in that map then you can deploy your vehicle from other maps directly to the new map through this new retain feature here's how this feature works Firstly, either go to garage or recover your vehicle in garage on any map from where you want to transfer your vehicle. Then hit retain and open global map. Then switch to target map where you want to deploy this vehicle. Go to its garage, then open up trucks option. There you have it, your retained vehicles. Now you can deploy it on this map. There are different cargo types in this game like wooden planks, concrete blocks, bricks, etc. There are different places where you can get different cargo like you can get wood from sawmill, uh, concrete blocks from warehouse and so on. To load your truck, you can either use auto load feature or you can use manual loading using crane. Uh, more on that later. There are different cargo slots available on our truck where you can load up different cargo accordingly to your current objective and for tough times you should equip, equip your truck with loading crane this crane will help you to load your cargo onto trucks crane controls are improved and loading mechanism is now way simpler than previous games uh, but overall concept is same load your cargo, bag your cargo and you are ready to go Crane in this game is way stronger than previous games. Just look at it. Uh, here we are uh, lifting this Chevy pickup. We're trying to uh, load this pickup truck onto our truck, and this way we can save, uh, say, few liters of fuel. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it worked, and it did. Now let's see if we can travel to other map with this setup. Let's go to this tunnel and and it worked. We are now on other map with our pickup in bed. Now let's unload this vehicle nice and slowly. Now let's discuss vehicle customization. 
basically there are three categories performance visual and color firstly the color you can paint your vehicle from uh, the range of given colors for free uh, let's select this skin which is recently added few days ago yes this one second category is visuals this include bodywork stuff like uh, bumper side steps roof lights etc this stuff uh, doesn't cost a lot of money and doesn't affect performance of your vehicle uh, let's install this bumper and let's select these rims now let's move to performance upgrades these include gearbox engine suspension winch tires etc these are most important upgrades and they cost decent amount of money these upgrade can affect your vehicle capabilities you can see the stats changing like power to weight ratio fuel consumption and you can see which tires are suitable for which terrain type like chain wheels are good on ice and off-road wheels are good on mud uh, some upgrades are locked behind rank and other you need to unlock by exploring a particular region more on this thing later here's a comparison of stock chevy versus uh, modified chevy as you can see the difference so that's how the these upgrade works your tires can make a lot of difference let's take an example of this scout 800 uh, in this clip it has stock tires stock suspensions and believe me this setup can get you stuck in this game uh, in certain situations now let's take a look at the same vehicle with lifted lifted suspension and big tires now this setup can get you almost anywhere of course if you uh, drive carefully these upgrades are different for different vehicles for example here we have this fleet star while the main upgrades like engine gearbox tires etc are common but the upgrades like all-wheel drive diff lock and frame add-ons are different for different vehicles for example not all trucks are suitable to install crane and not all trucks can have upgradable all-wheel drive or engageable diff lock let's also take a look at visual upgrades of this truck it's almost same for most vehicles as you can see some upgrades are free like rims but others you need to buy or unlock you can find or unlock upgrades by exploring some upgrades have location marked on your map while others you need to find by yourself usually they can be supported by this car wreckage here you can see this upgrade location is not showing up on my map but when I move closer to that car wreckage only then it's revealed most of time these upgrades you find can be equipped for free but sometimes you need to purchase them not only upgrades but you can unlock new vehicles by exploring or completing some vehicle related tasks again either you get those vehicles for free or you simply unlock them to buy speaking of exploration let's talk about watchtowers watchtowers are like cloaking points in previous games each watchtower can uncover portion of a map and also unlocks new tasks vehicle location etc these watchtowers are really fun to explore as they are on trickiest location possible and you can trigger this cutscene when you open a watchtower now let's move to small improvements these improvements are small but they make your life so much easier as compared to previous games so far i found few of them first is unloading in this clip i have two trucks connected by a winch and when i try to unload them the game is considering them as one truck i mean it was not there in previous games in previous games you need to switch uh, back and forth between two trucks to unload them 
Another small improvement I found in this game is attaching trailers. Attaching trailers in this game is so much easier as compared to previous games where the game keep annoys you with position your truck properly message. Refueling your truck is much more flexible and more sensible now. You can refuel from one vehicle to another without using any fuel add-ons means you can refuel from one vehicle tank to another vehicle tank directly. Also you can refuel from stationary trailers without attaching it to any vehicle unlike previous games. Now let's talk about this car. It's not part of base game. I got an update few days ago and after that update this vehicle was there in my garage as a retained vehicle along with some new skins for some vehicles. It appears to be based on UAZ. Remember that old Russian Jeep in previous games? Well, it's back. Now with big tires and a badass look. Not only it looks badass but its performance is also very good. This thing is almost as tall as a heavy duty truck. It can plow through Russian off-roads with ease and it can even cross the stop gates thanks to that lifted suspension and big tires. It's only vehicle that managed to get to map boundaries and by the way they look same as Mudrunner. Throughout my gameplay this vehicle never died on me except this one time. When I tried to go somewhere where I'm not supposed to go, well, this happened. This glitch was present in previous games as well, but it's not a big deal, don't worry about it too much. Speaking of glitches, there are few bugs in this game which might get fixed in final release, uh, like this delivery bug where game does not give you option to unload your cargo or any task completion pop up. I already, as you can see, I already delivered bricks, metal planks here and that fuel trailer for last requirement but still game does not give me that task completion pop up. It does not happen every time but so far I have encountered it three times. Although most time it can be fixed by simply restarting the game but sometime you need to go all the way to start marker to accept that task again which is very annoying. I hope all this info will help you to decide whether you want to buy this game or not. But in my opinion, if you are a fan of previous games, then you should definitely get this one. And if you are new to this series, I would still recommend you to try this game. It's available on all three major platforms, PlayStation, Xbox, and on PC, it's available on Epic Game Store. And with that, I conclude this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and I'll keep making more videos on this game. And let me know if you have any doubts in comment section. Thanks for watching.